Takam internet moving. Hmm. Mm -hmm -hmm. There we go. Okay. Um, we're going to uh, go through a brief history of things, you know, how we got here, uh, what some robot blocks that we've had, um, what uh, we've had in, in some recent past uh, successes, and, uh, and then our current um, new thing, some additional maps that are going to be available, and uh, we'll get into what that looks like and, um, and how we're going forward with it. So pretty excited about tonight because I think this is a, um, a really big thing. Uh, for FOW, and um, and we're going to start with uh, Vern uh, talking a little bit about a brief history of the maps that we've had available through the Wabakimi project. Vern, and so my question, you MJ, what are you seeing right now? Have I got my 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 first pr uh, screen up? Do I need to stop share? Yeah, uh, yeah. What well, else? I'm trying to figure out if my it's working. Am I sharing or not? I don't think so. Okay, then I got to do some more stuff. Right, I, I stopped my share now. So you now you share and see if that works. Right, with me here. here we go. Uh, that didn't work. What am I doing wrong? Uh, come on. All right. Are you seeing a... No. Wait. Yes. Yep. There we are. Yep. Okay, so it says Wabakini Project? Yep. All right, so we're going to go back a little ways to go forward. The Wabakini Project ran from 2004 to 2018, and it was an effort to clear existing routes within the park. Uh, over the course of that time frame from 2004 to 18, um, almost 250 individuals participated, 153 trips. Uh, the numbers are staggering. Uh, 3,000 miles, over 1,000 campsites, 1,000 portages. The distances is staggering. And that was all done by, by Phil Cotton, who <laughs> initiated this. Um, he was an avid canoeer, managed the Wabakimi project till he passed in May of 2018. And he spent his winters researching and planning routes. He did this in partnership with Barry Simon, who uh, was from Wisconsin and was basically his cartographer. And so between the two of them, they created most of the maps that we're gonna talk about here. Um, when the Friends came about, and this was part of uh, Bill's succession plan, uh, you know, we have a, a vision uh, to be an exceptional wilderness destination that Wabakimi area be an exceptional wilderness des des destination. And our mission is to participate in planning processes to advocate for the protection and preservation of this, of the huge amount of resources in this area that's actually the size of Vermont when you put all the pieces together. And one piece of our objectives was to produce print literature, maps, and other materials to help the visitor safely plan and successfully successfully execute a self-propelled recreational activity within the Wabakimi area. Uh, and so really what it boils down to, one of our one of our goals is to and objectives is to help you plan a trip. And we do that with we did that with our uh, planning map, with our five map volumes, and the Wabakimi canoe route guidebook. Those are the three tools we use. Now the original planning map, uh, here's what it looks like. And that was the first edition version. And this is actually version two of the first edition. The problem is the contractor, the uh, cartographer for that no longer exists. Uh, that that company's not out there, or at least we don't have any communication with them. And they, a long story, they had the files. So we couldn't make any changes to this document. Uh, it was a great document, but over time, every map needs to be updated. We also, uh, we, uh, Phil, created five map volumes, and they all represented different uh, uh, segments of the park, and you can see where they're at in relation. There's there's three in the South Central, and there's four in the Northeast, and then there's five, which is in the Southeast, basically the area around Armstrong. So those five volumes, were produced by the friends, uh, but we also had a problem with that. But we'll talk about that in a second. The other thing that we needed to do was create a document that would help you know what to expect, help you plan your access points and actually plan your trip. And we did that with our Wabakimi Canoe Routes Guide, which was done by Lawrence Mills, who's now a board member. 
And Lawrence was, you know, uh, you know, this was a long process. And I, I like to think it was a labor of love I, for him. It certainly was for me, because this is one of the comments and criticism that I got in my wanderings was that we didn't have a document that did what was laid out that would tell you what to expect, how to plan, and how to begin your trip. So this was a very important thing to, to have. So with that said, let's see if I can make the advance here. So here's the, here's the challenge, though. I, I said there are some problems with these map volumes, and I said there's some problems with the planning map. And the problem is the original files for all of these were lost. We don't have the original five map volumes. We don't have those original files, and we didn't have the original files for the planning map, which basically meant we could not do updates. And so these have been replaced. Uh, working with Lawrence Mills, using his format, uh, and again, he was wabakimimaps.com, we were able to create routes using the same information. Uh, originally, Lawrence did it with, with his documentation, but there, when we did a, an analysis, a gap analysis, we realized there were some of the map five map volumes that were not in the Wabakimi map system. So Lawrence has been working diligently to incorporate that information into his route map. So all that work that Phil did has been captured and it's in a format that we can update and correct. And that's that's incredibly important. And, and it became available. And again, Lawrence, thank you. Uh, he's made it available through our website and you can buy it off our website. And that happened on May 2nd. The other piece was we worked with Go Tracker out of Saskatchewan to do an update on the planning map. And I think the other piece that's important to know on this is we work very closely with the park staff. We had a lot of give and take back and forth to make sure that we were putting into the new planning map the information that was current and that they wanted to be there. And the beauty of the Wabakimi canoe routes is that we have the original files for that, and so we can make changes. And I believe that uh, Lawrence has been working with Dave to make sure that we're storing these in multiple places, online, you know, different file cabinet. There are, there are all kinds of lock boxes scattered around so that we won't have the problem we had with the vo map volumes and the planning map so that we can correct all three of these documents. So that's basically sort of a real quick version of the history. And uh, uh, that's how we got to where we are. I know that there were some of the original participants with Phil that were concerned that the map volumes were going to be lost and we've incorporated them. They're there uh, and now they're in a form in, in a um, format that we can go in and make changes and updates to. So I'll, I'll stop there. I know uh, MJ has some more stuff that relates to that and how you can help and participate, but that's a, a quick, a brief history. If I Hopefully I've met your needs, MJ. Oh, you're muted. Thank you. Uh, Dave, you're up next with uh, talking a little bit more about that planning map um, by Go Trekkers. Well, we worked with um, a Dan Dietricker. He's in the La Range, uh, Saskatchewan. Um, <clears throat> and he has really an amazing website with uh, tons and tons of canoe route maps for Saskatchewan in particular but also maps for like lots of other places uh, internationally and nationally. Um, the And he was very good about uh, working with us and he's able to, to print maps for us um, as well. And uh, a couple of things we added to the this uh, map, uh, we got train stops on this map and we have, um, entry points, which are mostly the same as the ones on the park map, but we also added the Fitchy Lake uh, entry point as well. Um, the cover picture was from by Rob Clavins, from, uh, uh, who was the runner-up in our, um, our photo contest uh, uh, this year. So as Vern said, we can make updates to the map uh, as needed. Um, We've differentiated between the the colors of the of the routes between those maintained by the park or allegedly maintained by the park, um, and the other historic routes uh, which are in red, which are so 
could be routes that are rarely, rarely traveled, or it could be routes that get a considerable amount of use. It's it just it just depends on on where we are, and I hope we'll, we could talk a little bit more about uh, about the under about the lesser used routes later on. Um, okay, let's see. Um, well, MJ, could I add a, a comment or two to, to Dave's yeah. description? The the map also has, uh, when you look at it real close, it actually identifies the uh, topographic maps that you can get from uh, the Canadian uh, Topo Service. So those are actually indicated on there. So if you want to get that, that, that information is also provided on this map. So I, I really think what we've created is a, a very useful tool for somebody planning a, a first-time trip to the region. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, Dave, did you want to um, talk uh, a little bit about how how to uh, get these maps, uh, how they're now available? Well, we've been we've had them at our at the recent shows. We've been at Canucopia and Toronto and Backcountry Canuke Symposium and the Outdoor Expo in Minneapolis. Uh, but we they're available from our website. Mm -hmm. uh, our, we have an online. Friends of Wabakimi um, map store, um, and uh, you can buy those directly, and we'll we'll ship them either from Wisconsin or from Thunder Bay as quickly as we can. Okay, very good. Let's see. Um, I think there's one thing I wanted to say about that. Okay, um, I'm gonna kind of interview Lawrence for this part uh, a little bit to get at his process. And then we'll talk a little bit about how we actually did that uh, comparison analysis. Um, but as uh, Vern indicated, this was how the volume maps were organized at one time. My understanding is that it's uh, to whatever degree possible by watershed, not necessarily uh, exactly that, but closely. And um, uh Lawrence organized his by route. So they're organized differently, but we had to uh, compare, you know, each of the components and make sure that that things were the same. So I'm going to talk to um, this is an example of one of Lawrence's maps. He organizes them in sets. So um, uh, there would be a root uh, set of maps. And there might be, you know, six, 10, 14 uh, different maps within one root set. So he breaks it up into, you know, sizable chunks so that you can see what you're, what you're looking for and, um, and get all the details um, out of it. Uh, so this is just an example of one page from a set of, um, of uh, maps for a root. Um, <clears throat> Lawrence, um, I was really interested the other day when we were talking uh, about uh, uh, kind of the history of how you got into this. Can you tell me or tell us a little bit about uh, just your mapping process, how that get, all gets started to begin with and, you know, where did it go? I, I, I think like everybody at that time, well, my first trip was, was probably in um, 97 or 98, 1998 um, to Wabagimi. Um, I had no idea. Uh, there were no maps. Um, you could buy the topographic maps um, uh, produced by the province, um, but that was it. Um, so most uh, canoeists at that time would buy a series of uh, topo maps to complete their route, and there are, there would be several um, at somewhat greater expense than perhaps the maps are available today. Um, but nevertheless, I did my first trip. I called um, um, one of the outfitters, um, asked for a recommendation, first trip in Wabakimi, where should I go? He said, absolutely, the Alam water. So I did. Um, got the train in, um, all my gear, canoe, the whole thing, put it in the water and um, started paddling. Yeah. Of course, the topo maps don't have um, information as to portages, um, where they are, how long they are. Um, whether a portage exists, um, and indeed where most of the rapids are. Uh, the top of the map shows some rapids, but certainly not the majority. Um, so you paddle along. And um, what I did was made notes um, of rapids, swifts on my top of map, um, 
right through the whole length of the trip. Um, so when I had finished the trip, I had a topper map with a zillion notes across it. <laughs> um, and I thought, you know, this really doesn't work for my next trip. So I happen to have a graphics program. So I started to develop my own maps for myself, for my trips. Um, I later did the, the Flint River, for example, um, and prepared my topper maps. I had no data to put on them because of course it wasn't available um, other than where the rivers were and um, so on. Um, so I, again, made notes as I went along, but when I got home, um, I could then update that graphics produced map um, with um, the information that I'd personally seen and gathered. Um, and so it went on. Um, and I wound up with, with um, um, a number of trip maps of this nature that looks something like the one on the screen there, which was my first map. Um, and thought there's an awful lot of work that goes into this. Now, I enjoy that kind of work, and I enjoy um, um, updating maps and, and, and um, in terms of where I've been. Um, but that started thinking about the uh, me thinking about the website, um, and I think my website start uh, production started in two thousand eight, um, and I started uh, loading the maps up and and adding new ones, and it wasn't until two thousand eleven that I started to I think um, sell maps, um, and um, believe it or not, one of our members. Uh, Peter Orbinger and his brother were the first customers I had um, um, in, I believe, 2011. Anyway, that's how it started. Um, what do I need to add to that? Well, it's clearly grown from there. So. It, oh, I was saying, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. You now have a set of, uh, like, how many routes do you have? Um Good question. You should ask Dave. He's been loading <laughs> onto your website, um, but but a, a, a good number. Um, um, I would say probably around thirty or so um, okay. different routes at the moment, maybe more. Um, I didn't think to count them. Isn't okay. that interesting? <laughs> um, what I did uh, initially was to to set them up in segments. Um, and I numbered the maps, um, um, as some of you may know, um, starting with the 100 group, which were those routes that um, began with a, a, a with a trip on the train. Mm -hmm. And the, 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 the route started at the train stop. Um, so all of the rivers going from south to north um, can be accessed from the train track. And there are probably, well, Alamora, Flint, um, Nemo, um, all sorts. Um, so that was the 100 group. Um, and then came uh, uh, um, the the mixed group in the 200s, which either could start with the paddle in or could start um, with a train trip. Um, and then um, in the 300 group um, were uh, paddle ins, or in some cases, and, and the 400 group was, was uh, uh, fly-ins. Um, I'm showing um, the directory right now with your numbers right. across the top. That's right. The mm -hmm. 500 routes were, were actually um, mm -hmm. either add-ons that you could add on to another route, um, a, a, a route map set, or um, um, you could fly in and do them on their own. Mm -hmm. um, so that created the series. Um, do you want to get into, um, yeah, um, I, I, when I, uh, started looking at your maps, uh, Lawrence, I noticed, um, you know, what were the differences between your maps and, um, the volume maps and, uh, as we mentioned earlier, you know, watersheds versus routes. So that was a little bit different. Um, and you had um, root options, and I was going to point that out with that directory. Um, if I go back, I'm sorry to kind of scroll through right. here. 
But uh, you'll notice like, for instance, these first four are all around the Allen water area. And so there, there's different routes that you could take on the Allen water or you could combine some. And um, so uh, you've got them grouped um, and, and with options uh, for those, uh, wa wa uh, not watershed, but uh, root areas. Let, let me talk about that if I may. Um, sure. I just wanted to back up a, a, a second. Um, and, and cover the, the sources of information for my maps. Okay. Um, obviously, personal experience was where I started. Mm -hmm. um, after the second trip um, into Wapakimi, my second trip, um, I talked at, at length to the then um, um, Park Superintendent, John McGrath, who was enormously helpful. Um, he had been sent over time um, a number of, of um, trip, uh, trip reports uh, from various canoeists um, like myself. Um, and um, he sent me copies of all of those. Plus he, he sent me the original um, um, section sheets that were prepared in the seventies by a team of um, um, surveyors of the Wapakemi Park essentially canoe routes within the park. Mm -hmm. um, these were um, almost quite minuscule uh, on a sheet of paper. Um, and, and you almost needed a, a magnifying glass to be able to see um, 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 the, any detail on them. But they were, they were extremely helpful in determining where portages were. Um, in some cases, they, in many cases, they had the lengths. Um, and so that was my, my experience plus the section sheets plus trip reports were my initial um, sources of data for, for my maps. Um, this then expanded uh, once um, um, the Friends of Wapakemi volumes started coming out. Um, when that happened, um, there was another source of information. Um, and one of the, the key elements here was that um, the Wapakemi project had carefully measured the length of each portage. Um, so clearly, I would start incorporating that data as well. Um, and I wanted to make sure that that the maps that I produced um, are continually updated with new information that becomes available and everything that was available at the beginning when the map uh, that particular route map is created. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's where they came from. Um, that's basically where we are. Um, okay. MJ, you have mentioned yeah. um, 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 alternative options here. Um, <laughs> let me just speak to that. Um, it became apparent um, when looking through, um, when looking at the, the, the large um, uh, topo maps um, um, and park maps that many routes connected. And in fact, there were many alternatives um, tracks you could take on a particular route. Um, I mean, a, a route, a simple route like the Allen Water, um, you, you can um, um, travel up McQuaid instead of doing the, the um, downstream section of the Allen Water. Um, all sorts of options like that. And I thought these needed to be included um, in the map, my route maps that cover that particular area. So then started the build up of options. And of course, the more you look, the more options there are um, uh, connected to a particular route. So, um, um, so the, the, the example that you, you were pointing to in terms of the Allen Water, um, MJ, were um, it became apparent that we needed to create um, several separate, separate Allen Water maps um, rather than trying to cram it all into one, uh, all of the options. So uh, it made more sense, it was a lot clearer. Um, and you can read in the map description um, exactly what that particular route involves um, and, and how it compares to the to the next Allen Water route, for example. Mm -hmm. Now that kind of gets into another uh, difference I saw. Um, I don't have an example of it, but at the beginning of each of your route maps, you have a description and it's kind of a one page description of, of the route and give some basic information in there that might be very helpful for trip planning. Um, and uh, uh, so that was a difference between, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. That was a difference between um, 
the volume maps and, and these. Um, the, another thing I noticed was that um, uh, there were a number of people who would, who would, um, uh, who had concerns about in the volume maps that the, the flow of water was not indicated. Well, it was, it just wasn't as obvious, um, you know, for some. So yeah, you, you kind of had to read the, the, uh, the directions that said that uh, if you read the, the words from the top, it, it kind of it went uh, with the flow of the, of the river. And, um, and in yours, I'll, I'll point out, I think right here, you know, you actually just marked on the map, here's the direction of the flow. Um, you know, just a, a common question that people have um, when they're looking at such maps. So um, the, the other thing that was uh, when we were looking and comparing, uh, there, you cover a lot of stuff in your, uh, in your maps, but the volumes covered uh, even more. So uh, what we did was we took, and, and, and I'll get into the analysis now and, and, and show people yeah what we did um, to- What uh, you did? Sure. Well, uh, it was Vern and myself. Um, we okay. looked at- um, uh, That's it, a lot of work. Um, yeah, well, basically what we did was we took uh, like volume one of the map, and we did this for each of the volumes, listed each map that was in that, what river system it was in. And then we looked at the new planning map. Was that information on the new planning map? Was it in your route maps? Was it in the guidebook? We made notes on all of that. And then we made a list of like, where, where could you find that at in your maps? And is there something missing or different, um, you know, in, in that map um, that we need to have you look at? And that's what, these are the notes of what you've been doing um, recently. You've been looking at um, the things that are either missing, if, if there's an N for no, that doesn't exist then you did something to uh, create that. Or if there was uh, something that was a little bit different, then uh, you indicated that, yep, I fixed that, it's done. Um, so you are, you are not quite done. Is that my understanding? Is that correct? Yes. Um, I mean, basically this is an attempt um, um, or an exercise to make sure that we, inc we include in the new maps, um, all of the data that is available, no matter what the source, um, on that particular route. Mm -hmm. So it's totally comprehensive and it contains all the information that is available. Yeah, exactly. And, and exactly. Plus the fact, plus the fact that we can update them as time yeah. goes along, um, if new information or changes take place. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing I wanted to mention that we went back to, and then I'll come to um, where I am with this list, um, was that, um, now I've lost myself. I shouldn't <laughs> sidetrack. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> let, let, let me continue with, with your spreadsheet here. Um, as you mentioned, I've gone through um, um, each one of your comments and either created uh, new maps, um, number 305 right at the top there, um, in my notes um, is is a map set that I didn't have. At least I hadn't published. Um, I actually had created a Jack Fisher River map, but it it hadn't been published yet. So I added to that um, to complete all of the data um, uh, or include all of the data that is in the volume, um, the books, um, and published number three hundred five, um, Savannah Lake, Little Jackfish. Um, I added to, uh, in, in terms of the second uh, element um, or the second row there, um, added to the Flint River to include that piece of information that was missing um, and so on down. And you can see uh, all of those things. Now, if we move down the list, um, you will see some things I haven't done yet, <laughs> but, but we're getting around to. Um, new maps, 205 is a new route, um, but I'm just kind of scrolling pretty quickly here, but um, that's they... okay. Um, there are several things that haven't been included. There are that that haven't that I haven't got to yet. Mm -hmm. um, a number of the comments in terms of um, um, uh, campsites missing, for example, mm -hmm. uh, that are in the volume maps that I hadn't um, uh, didn't have in my maps. So those will be um, included. Um, where there are differences in portage information. Um, that will be investigated and included to make sure that we have all of the volume map data 
in the new maps. Mm -hmm. um, there, will be, there are two new maps uh, that I haven't started yet. One is covering the Opechuan, um, and what was the other one? Um, just south of the Albany. No, can't find it. Da, 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 da. Ah, new boat. The Opechuan and the Shepherd Square uh, rivers. Um, I will produce maps of to make sure we include that data. I don't have them myself, mm -hmm. or I didn't have them. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just looking at my reminder list here. Um, I think I've covered most of the um, kinds of data that we've added. Um, and I mentioned the data sources, this, the original section ship, trips, sh section sheets, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. my own trips, um, the, my own map sets, trip reports and comments, from other paddlers. I haven't yet been able to go through all of the trip reports that are listed on the Friends of Wapakami website, but I'm making progress. <laughs> I just want to make sure that if there is any information in there, if there are any comments that would be useful to uh, future paddlers, that it goes on the maps as well. One of the advantages of my maps, I think, is that um, I can put comments about particular elements on the map pages. Mm -hmm. uh, so that as you're paddling along, um, you can note that something of interest is coming up or something to be aware of or uh, alert to is coming up on your trip. So th that's useful, I think, on an ongoing basis as you paddle. Mm -hmm. um, that's a lot of work, Lawrence. Um, that's what we are. A great deal of, of work that you've put into it and that you continue to put into it. And I'm just going to thank you for all of us on, on the hard work that you've put in. You've made small changes and big ones and, and you're still churning them out. And uh, what you told me the other day was that uh, reading those trip reports kind of motivates you to get this done. And, and, mm -hmm. um, and so uh, that's, that's my cue to, to motivate other people out there listening to get those trip reports in. Um, and uh, so what we're going to, I'm going to turn it over to Dave in just a second here to talk about how we're going to uh, have these available. Um, I wanted to show you again um, this, I, I'm calling it a directory. Uh, to be honest with you, I, I created this uh, so that I could, because I'm not as familiar with all the areas that I only know the ones I've been to. And uh, that's not, uh, that's pretty small compared to what you guys have done. So um, I, I really kind of had to make this list of all the water um, uh, areas, uh, uh, the waterways that were in each of your map sets so that I could find which, uh, what um, uh, in, can make the comparisons between the volume maps and your maps. I could find my way through it a lot faster. And I got to thinking that uh, this kind of a directory might be um, um, help people as they're planning for uh, what maps they need to uh, purchase uh, online. <clears throat> to do their trips, uh, we plan to have this directory available. Um, I'll have to update it as, as things get done, um, but uh, uh, it might be a fast way for people to determine, yeah, I need this one, not that one. So um, uh, that will be something that we'll have uh, available. Uh, Dave, do you wanna talk a little bit about uh, how we're gonna be presenting this? Yes, uh, will you, uh, would you let me share the screen? Yep, absolutely, uh, let me stop sharing. Okay, and then let's see. I this is a compilation of our uh, Wabaki, our friends of Wabakimi uh, store. This is a PDF document that you can um, download. I think it was also at the bottom of the invite that went out today. So um, uh, this uh, uh, let's see here. I can move everybody over here. Uh, we have up here, we have our our volumes and our stickers and our guidebook and our planning map. And then page two uh, is the listing of all, all, of all the routes. Now, now Lawrence didn't mention, but I'll mention uh, that if you want to buy uh, a laminated, any, any of these laminated map sets, you can order them directly from Lawrence at his website still. Um, if you want the PDF version uh, download, you can you can do that directly 
uh, here. So these are all active links, uh, or you can go directly to our uh, Friends of Wabakimi on, online uh, store. Let's see, I was going to look, show you an example of one of these. This is this is the Ogaki River, and this takes you right to the, the, the store item. Um, and it, if you want the member's price, you have to log, you have to log in. And I think most everybody knows how to do that. At least I hope so. This is a 15 map set. Um, this is Lawrence's, um, description. Uh, also. We can't you know, we, see that Dave. You can't. No, we are still seeing the list. Oh, okay. Well, I'd have, I'd have to get, don't know, but um the uh uh can i make mention there dave sure can i make a comment two things yeah. um you're, you're quite right um i omitted to mention that um not only uh laminated printed laminated map sets will still be uh, available from wabagimimaps.com but also custom routes i get quite a, a a lot of requests for custom design routes um and so I will continue to do those, obviously. Um, Thank you. Right. You are looking at Dave at the moment. Uh, Dave, are you trying to find? Um... Well, I was kind of. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's see what's that. Uh, uh, I don't. I don't have that screen in front of me at the moment. Okay. But, uh, but anyway, anyway, these are all available on our website uh, at our Friends of Wabakimi map store, which you can get to from a variety of locations. Awesome. Um, awesome. Um, okay. Uh, I want to thank Lawrence once again for all the hard work you've put into this. Um, I think that uh, this is a really important uh, addition to uh, Friends of Wabakimi, and I I think it will live on and all your hard work will live on. And, and that's, uh, that's quite a legacy. Um, I, I want to turn to the, uh, the chat. Oh, wait a minute, Dave, you had something you wanted to talk about roots that um, uh, future roots. Well, you know, it, when we're, when we're working on these, of course, there's the different, there's a lot of differentiation in these routes. Of course, the Allen water routes and the Flint river routes um, and the, Caribou River up to Whitewater Lake and down the Berg River. These are routes that are 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 more frequently traveled, and you'll find quite a number of uh, trip reports. But then we have like um, routes in like say the Caribou Forest, which is uh, Savant Lake north of the town of Savant Lake, um, and that highway. Uh, and there's several entry points there, Pashkokogan Lake, Hamilton Lake, uh, Fitchie Lake, that these are routes that don't don't get the kind of use that you see inside the park. So um, I'm, I just want to highlight that there's a, there's a need. These are beautiful routes, scenic, great fishing. Um, and they need to be they need to be traveled and and reconnoitered. You know, our expedition committee was encouraging people to paddle the Car West Side Caribou routes. Uh, some of those routes need to be um, basically re re reconnoitered. Now, a, a, another good example of this, and and I could find that this route uh, that Lawrence just worked on was uh, a route right north of the train line uh, off the 702 road the Chival Chivalston Lake there's yes. a natural train stop there and then there's a and it's it's in the it's in our friends of Wabakimi uh, map volume as a route but uh, seriously I don't think anybody's actually traveled that route in 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 recent history so I mean and the the description of this route talks about that and this is a route that you could you know, could start off the 702 road or from or from the rail line and um and travel uh due west till you get to Heathcote Lake and and access the Flint Landing and the Flint River. But you know this is an example of a route that that would be a real kind of an exploration route. 
Uh, it, we have a map for it. We've had to, you know, we got map sets, but it's, it's the portages may not have been traveled by literally anybody. And who knows how long uh, in theory, they were, they were worked on by the Wabakimi project, but we don't have a written report that we could refer you to. Well, and, and Dave, if I can add to that, the, the, the last crews that were there were in 08, 09, and maybe right. 10. So the, those routes were cut and mapped uh, on, in the Caribou Forest on the west side, just east of 599 in, in 08, 09. There's probably not been a crew. I know there hasn't been a crew and probably very few people paddling them. So we desperately need people to paddle those areas to confirm that those portages are there, the, you know. Right. Yeah, we, we need that information because all of our stuff is dated by a decade and then some. Mm -hmm. Right. And another area that, uh, where you could, you could I think, would be in a similar situation uh, would be the area up on the Atwood River uh, and the Witchwood, which I'm, I'm told is a lovely river to yeah. paddle. Uh, there's some outposts up there. Uh, I know that a few of us paddled the Atwood in 2019 and there was a portage that had been worked on six years previously that I remember that Ken Babinchek counted like 50 step overs <laughs> you know so uh there, there's just areas that don't get a lot of use that are prime canoe routes and mm -hmm. and we want to encourage people to consider some of those or or maybe for the specific purpose of uh reconfirming our our maps um mm -hmm. you know. exactly a constant update um yeah. i i did i did dig up uh a copy it's probably not the one you want uh but i just dug one up i uh, because i thought you wanted to give just an example of what they would be getting yeah. mm -hmm. um this is uh an example of a route uh the kapka river from aldridge creek to uh the Kimiga, I don't know how to say it. Um, and uh, you can see on the first page, he's got some information um, uh, from the route, from uh, trip reports or from experience himself. And then um, let me move this over because I can't tell if you can see everything. But, um, you know, here's map one. And you can see the detail uh, on each of these maps. Um, got these marked portages, distances of portages. Um, Swifts, you know, uh, made made notes. You can line it or run it. Here's the direction of flow. You're getting a lot of really good detailed information uh, in these maps, and um, he's he's blown them up to a you know a, a place where you know it's it's probably way more useful uh, to you because um, you'll see the contours of the waterways and. Um, and he puts direction in there as well. And MJ, I would add that you could sit in a bouncing boat and read that map. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Big enough, there's enough detail that you can see it bouncing in a boat. Yes, exactly. Um, Which I would add, if I may, um, is the advantage of having a laminated map because they're waterproof. <laughs> ah, there you go. There you go. You are right. Um, okay, so that's just an example. Um, I wanted to, uh, you know, um, get to the questions because I think there's a few here. Um, first question is, how does the information on paddle planner, example, portage information, campsite info relate to the map information available through FOW and Lawrence Mills? Is there overlap of source info or is paddle planner uh, based off of a different source or primarily the same sources? Um, I've only used Paddle Planner uh, to a small degree, and I didn't think it was as detailed as you would need, but there are some crossover in information. Is Bill uh, Pyle on this call? Oh, yeah, I just got back. I had to step away. Oh, okay. Here. Did you hear the question? No, I didn't. Okay. Um, the question from someone, uh, from Jason, is um, how does Paddle Planner relate to this? Um, do you, do you, cause you've used paddle planner off and on for Wabakimi, correct? Yes. Um, and, uh, how did you find it comparing to, uh, your other resources that through FOW? Oh, pretty close since they got the information from the friends. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I noticed that the distances are slightly different. I don't know whether that's part of his software when it goes across a portage, whether it's, yeah, I don't know whether they put that in manually or not. I can't answer that question. 
Okay. But I think he's pre uh, Ben's pretty good about making updates when they become aware to him. Okay. But, but as Bill noted, we, we fed all that information to panel, panel planner. So they're basically using our information and it's pretty much an overlap. Mm -hmm. Very good. Very good. Um, oh, okay. Dave answered that. A paddle planner got their info from our map volumes. Good. All right. Um, <laughs> I didn't slow down for you, Maurice. <laughs> um, any other questions out there? You'd have, have to. A, I have a request. Okay. If I may. And that is uh, uh, to emphasize what has been said before, that we need, in order to continually update these maps um, with current information um, over time, um, we need people to report any differences, paddlers to, to report any differences they find between our maps um, and reality. If anything's changed, if port, uh, portages have become unusable and therefore new ones created, tell us about it. We'll change it on the maps. Very Thank good. You. Any other questions? Um, you'll have to unmute yourself and speak up. Or comments or anything. OK. Well, I was really excited to um, have this uh, webinar and have this information presented. I'm excited for people to use your maps, Lawrence. And um, thank you so much once again. And, and thanks, uh, Vern and Dave, for chipping in here, too. And um, I think that's it for tonight. We ought to thank you for the hard work that you've put in, analyzing these and comparing the map sets and so on and so forth. It's, it's the tools we need to make the changes to the maps. You're welcome. Thank you. Sorry, Mary Jane, if I may. Yes. Um, I, I did have a question. I couldn't find my unmute button. Sorry about okay. that. Uh, it, it is a question regarding the uh, the volume maps and the maps that are in the uh, like the detailed route maps. Are they the same maps, only broken down into routes as they are from the volume maps or the volume books? Um. It, I'm not sure what you mean by same. Uh, Lawrence, you want to address that? Yeah. Um, the, the current maps that have just been uploaded um, from uh, wabakamimaps.com are a combination of all the data that's currently available. So it includes all the volume data. And uh, we have a little more work to do there in terms of the comparison with the volume maps and uh, transfer some of that data over. But most of it is done. Um, we've also incorporated uh, new information uh, that neither the volume maps had nor I had in my maps that came through trip reports and, and things of that nature. So it's a compilation of all the data that's available from any source about Wabakimi. Okay, thank you. How about any other questions? You know, from someone who's used uh, um, his maps, I want to say thank you because, boy, they, they are extremely helpful. Thanks for the pr promotion. <laughs> but if, if anybody can add to them, please say so, and, and we'll make the changes. Thank you. That's all right. Right. Well, <laughs> I'll just add in it's one one Edmonton in Vegas. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> uh, hockey reigns supreme. <laughs> no wonder you wanted me to go slower. <laughs> no, no, I want I wanted to I wanted to focus more on the maps. They're moving so they're moving down so fast I felt like I had vertigo. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying You're to copy down the information. <laughs> well, hey, I, I, I tell you what, can I ask Dennis a question? Because Dennis is very engaged and involved in the paddling community. How do how do our maps compare to other 
other parks and, and wilderness areas in, in, in your sphere of understanding? Uh, you know what, you're, you're all obviously doing uh, due, dil like, you know, your, your due diligence when it comes to this stuff. Uh, stuff from what I could see from Lawrence, uh, your, your new map here, even, even your old map has still got some, uh, some great detail in planning. Um, you know, if you, if you compare it with, uh, say, for instance, Friends of Tomogamy and their maps, it, it's right up there. Uh, it's right up there. I, I find with Wabakimi, it's uh, very difficult to find information on this. Um, so the resources that uh, Friends of Wabakimi are making available to everybody is is very, very helpful. Um, so you're you're on the right track here from what I, this is my, my perspective of it, uh, somebody who's planning a trip, but from my perspective, uh, you're making it a lot easier on a lot of people right now. So I'd say keep up the great work. Well, Dennis, let me let me ask you this, Dennis. Now yes. that you're aware of Lawrence's maps and yep. you're aware they're now on our website to uh, download or get them from Lawrence Laminated, for your upcoming trip this summer, are you going to get some of the new maps? <laughs> I got it on my other screen right here already. So yeah, the order will be coming through. All right. That along with the, uh, the that's why I was asking uh, if, if the maps that are in, in Lawrence's uh, detailed trip map reports or, or, or trip routes, if they're the same maps that can be found in the, uh, in the volume uh, booklets, right? You know, one through five. So. Well, my, but, my uh, recommendation is that they, they are much better. Mm -hmm. so I, I would, I would move away from the map volumes and go to yeah. Lawrence's maps. If, if I were just starting my first trip into this park. Mm -hmm. Sure. Thanks. Yeah, Maurice. That's I, think, great. I think you'll find it easier to plan your trip with, the system that Lawrence uses, our our previous system, you had to hunt and peck and pull things together and literally tape them up on the wall to figure out which one connected together. Lawrence is much more route oriented, much more user friendly, in my opinion. I, I concur yeah. with that. Uh, the first time I used a map volume, I actually bought it and then I literally tore it apart. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. I used the wall in my house and I taped them all up on the wall. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, the, the thing I like too about the digital PDF is I, I'm, I'm a printer by trade, right? So I, I have the ability to print all these things. And so I could, I could just pull it apart, put it back together on my computer and print what I need. So that's a, that's a great thing. Mm -hmm. I will throw a challenge to you, Dennis. If you see things that we can improve upon, please share those with us because you, you see a lot of maps and, and you're very involved in the paddling community and there's probably a lot of some other tricks of the trade that we haven't captured. Certainly would love to have your input and anything you can do to help us do the process better. 100%. Yeah. If I could add anything to uh, to Lawrence's map, sir, I certainly will. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Well, Dennis, um, I'm going to haphazardly say that when you do your trip in Wapakimi, you're going to be doing a video. Uh, yeah, yeah, that'll be happening. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> as, as I start to get back into uh, more of my trip planning video or uh, trip, like my, my tripping videos, uh, once this season of uh, is over at the end of the month here, uh, I could, I could get back to my real business of getting out there paddling and recording. So, so looking forward to that, especially be great, because this be is my bucket list for, uh, for FOW. If somewhere in your video on your trip, you go. Damn, I'm thankful well, I have these new maps from Lawrence Mills. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I, uh, as, as I've been doing this show, I've been learning a lot more about acknowledging my, uh, my, my sponsors and those who input. So, yeah, we'll, definitely, we'll, you'll we'll get a shout a out. Shameless, there we're happy to take a shameless plug. Please, please plug. It's like, hey, <laughs> no need to be shameless because, uh, like I say, I, I joined for a reason, and you guys are doing the right thing for uh, for Wabakimi and your love of the park. So, keep it up. Yep. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So you guys will see an order for Burt Rock uh, 3, 310 Burt Rock uh, coming out soon. So. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, thank you, everybody, for coming out tonight. Really appreciate it. Um, hope we can uh, help you with your planning in the, uh, in the future here. I just wanted to give a shout out to Lawrence. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you to MJ and uh, Dave and Vern and all the rest of the committee for, for doing all of this. Thank you.
All right. Well, good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Dr. Good night, good night everybody. Go Oilers. Stop <laughs> record. <laughs> Stop your record. Oh.